On today's edition of Forever Home, we're talking about setting trusses, getting the roof prep here on our screened in porch. Give you a tour, show you what's going on. Let's get going. Hey friends, Drew here in beautiful West Grove, Pennsylvania on a very windy day. Uh, our team has the pump jack system set up around the outside perimeter of the screened and ports that we were working on. The uh, trusses were delivered here a couple days ago and we brought them out, bring them up. And basically the way we do this, I wish I could have showed you a video earlier, but uh, you turn them upside down, you put one leg up on one side, you put the other leg up on the other side, and then you roll them over. And with the guy on each side, you're measuring left and right to make sure that you've got it centered, make sure everything's working its way right down the middle of your structure, and then you start bracing them together. So the guys are kind of doing the finishing touches now. Maybe we'll interlace a couple of the photos from earlier in today as this thing was coming together. But I'll show you some of the different pieces that are important when you're setting trusses. One of the things that we really like to have are these uh, steel truss spacers and they're designed that you can nail that first one on and then open this up and put the next cord in there. And as you wrap around it and put your roof nails down on the top of this, uh, that puts holds thing exactly 16 on center. So you of course start with your layout on the top of our beams to know that we're the same distance either out from the house or in from the end, whichever direction you're running your your 16 inch on center spacing. You get all your marks laid out on that. And then once you combine that with the truss spacer here, that's gonna make things a little bit easier. I'll show you some of the blocking that we put in to begin with. And then the guys right now are working on installing the hurricane straps. So we've been working on this project to make sure everything's tied down good and tight. There's two different styles that we like. This is a twist strap. You put one side on the, on the beam, the other side up on the rafter, or in this case, the truss, and that uh, locks everything together. And I, these are the other style I really like. And I kind of prefer these, but with where the mending plates are on the trusses, these wouldn't fit in there nicely and they were hitting some different things so we weren't able to use those so let me take you down closer and we'll uh, we'll walk you through the process so once we had our layout done the very first thing that we did was we cut these sections of two by four they're about 14 inches long give or take and they're spacing us off of the existing house structure to where our first rafter is going to be and we actually had to do a little bit of math and account for the thickness of the plywood and then figuring out where the center of the previous uh, truss system is so that we were 16 on center off of that tr existing truss. So as we bring this out across and we go to do our sheathing for our plywood for our roof for later, we're gonna wanna finger lace that into the old plywood so the new structure and the old structure are all tied together continuously. We want that 16 on center spacing continuous so that we don't have a weird short piece of plywood. If you don't think that through, you're gonna wind up wasting materials as you're doing things. So step one was get that measurement figured out, get the layout figured out, and and marks run all across the beams. Get these spacers put in, tagged into the house so that we have something to tie that first truss to. And once that first truss was in, then we could switch over to the metal steel truss spacers that I was showing you. And then it's just a matter of bringing them in upside down across here and then flipping them, rotating them up. And you'll see those aluminum spacers right up here, the steel spacers right to the top. And then once this project was all said and done, we took this two by four in from the end before we put the gable truss on that has a plywood on it. And Kevin's working right now to get screws in each one of those to help tie those together. Uh, depending on your truss manufacturer and the size of your truss, there are all sorts of different bracing requirements that uh, can apply to these different systems. So you really need to check the truss manufacturer and the instructions they provide to see what is going to be the requirement in your application for how this is set up. Of course, if this was freestanding and we weren't tying into the existing house, uh, we would have to be much more aggressive with our initial bracing to help hold things. Uh, so this will get us overnight for now and we can come back and hit it again tomorrow and keep going with some of the next steps. So you can really see the screen room start to come together. We're going to have beautiful screening up here in the gable archway in this vaulted ceiling. So that's going to be pretty. And then German and Steve are working on putting in the joist hangers, the hurricane straps to help hold things together to make sure. So we got, you know, toenails into things, but then also those hurricane straps are really going to help hold things down. So we're bringing the trusses down into the top of the beams. We've got the beams bolted down. We showed you the all thread in the last video that runs all the way down through these and into the footers. And we're anchoring this whole system uh, all the way to the ground to help prevent any kind of wind uplift should we ever have a, a tornado or severe weather situation come through this area. And in a, a job like this, the pump jacks are absolutely invaluable. We're able to just attach those right to the bottom of our beams and get up just high enough that the guys are able to work easily, safely, and not have a bunch of ladders all strung up in different places. So when you've got the space, and not every job you have the space, but when you have it, the pump jacks really do a nice job of making it easy for the guys to get done what they need to get done. So what we're gonna be working on next, now that the trusses are installed, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to be adding the fascia boards to all of the rafter tails on this side. We're going to be adding our rake boards up and over the peak here at the front. 
We're gonna be stripping off that other roof. We will be pulling off some of the plywood and interlacing our plywood from the new roof and the old roof and getting that tied together good. And then ice and water shut over the whole thing and then shingle over the whole thing. So there'll be one continuous color. You won't have two different colored shingles uh, in that area. So drip edge and there's a couple other pieces to go into it, but we'll cover that in a different video. But just to give you an idea what goes into setting trusses and, and getting them everything nice and square, nice and straight, so that when you go to put your plywood on the roof, that all of those joint lines are gonna be where you need it to be and you're able to put nails into part of the trusses where you're not, you know, when you go to joint and two pieces of plywood, you don't want one flopping or hanging. But if you don't get the truss layout right, it's gonna completely jack your plywood uh, installation and it's gonna take a lot longer at that point. So you really gotta think through this stuff ahead of time as you're working through it. So we were pretty fortunate in this job in that we were able to get the as-built truss specs from the township uh, for this reverse gable extension off the back of the house. And while it didn't have the uh, scissor truss vaulted ceiling that we're using here, it gave us all the lengths and the measurements. Now, before ordering the trusses, we did take off the OSB plywood on the end of this current addition to the living room and verify all of those measurements to make sure that what we got, you know, who knows, some, some Sometimes you submit plans to a township and then there's a change or something changes. If the township didn't get updated, maybe there was an old set, whatever. We wanted to make sure we had that right. Once we had that confirmed, we were able to call our truss fabricator, give them all the specifications, um, the old pictures, but also, you know, that we wanted it in scissor truss. We wanted these lengths, these dimensions, all of this. They sent that back to us for approval. We went over all the numbers again to make sure nothing got lost in translation and then sent it back to them with the signature saying, yeah, go ahead and, and place this order for us and get them out here and get it delivered. So we did all right in getting those uh, in and done and delivered. So getting them in is the easy part. Now it's uh, sheathing it and on to the next piece. So at this point, we've got our structure pretty well secure. It shouldn't be moving anywhere as far as rack and any of that. The truss is gonna uphold it. Once the sheathing is on the roof, it's really gonna lock things in. So once the sheathing's on, all of my angles, everything for our vertical posts here should be locked in and staying the same. And that's gonna allow me to get in here and measure and actually begin to order the panels for the screen room. But we gotta make sure that the room is locked and there's no, nothing gonna twist, move, adjust anything uh, between here and there. So I wanna wait till the shingle, the, the plywood's on the roof before I go and get the measurements on each one of these openings. So once we get dried in, we can finish the electric in this wall for the television and whatever else is happening on that wall. This window is coming out and there's gonna be a door that's gonna go over here uh, on the right-hand side of things. So that'll give them access onto here. We've got a railing to take off on the existing porch so that we can put a screen door in there. A couple other phases, there's a soft ceiling to go in. But next step, we need to get that roof on. We need to get this dried in. And once we're under cover, there's a lot of other things that can start happening. Uh, but we like to do things in sequence and we really didn't wanna open up a can of worms until we knew, you know, the truss, truss ordering is for the real wild card. We don't exactly know how long they're gonna take to fabricate, when we're gonna get scheduled for delivery, and we're kind of at the mercy of that supplier. So they get here, they show up, and it's like, oh, by the way, we're coming tomorrow. Oh, great. And then, then we work our schedule to figure things out to get going on the next phase of the project. So this is Drew for Cope Built, your full service construction and renovation company here in West Grove, Pennsylvania. If we can solve a problem for you, take a picture, send it to us here on our Facebook page. Click that contact us button there at the top across the cover photo. And our team will be happy to assist you. We've dedicated office staff standing by weekdays, 9.30 in the morning until two in the afternoon at 484-748-0008. Choose option two for Cope Built, your full service construction renovation company extension two for new projects or just message us here on Facebook and we'll get right back to you. There's nothing we don't do. Roofing, siding, windows, doors, decks, anything on the interior home, renovate your bathroom, make over your kitchen, finish your basement for you. Plumbing, electrical, drywall, spackle, paint, build an addition, a custom greenhouse, a garage, whatever it may be, hit our team up. We'd be happy to assist you. We are a registered home improvement contractor in Pennsylvania, number 88078, license in Delaware, 10490. If you enjoyed this video and you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button, share this with some friends. Subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you get updated for all our new content. We're doing new videos two to three times a week and trying to educate you on some of the questions that you might want to ask when you're talking to a contractor of potential work on your home so you can separate those who know what they're talking about from those who don't. If you got a question about what we're working on or something here at your house, hit us up down in the comments down below and we try to answer those as quickly as we can. Give us a day or two to get back to you. But uh, ask us some questions down in the comments or give us your thoughts on how you like to set trusses, what tricks and tips you like to use when you're put doing a project like this. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you soon. All right, we're finished with this project. You're gonna be proud to say it's not just done. It was coat built. It's too hard for everybody else. It's just right for us. We'll catch you all in the next edition of Forever Home. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.